Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can completely customize your open web UI interface. Now, obviously we know that there are ways in which we can do this just by clicking the settings button, click on interface, and then sure, we have all of these different things, right? For UI, for chat, if you wanted to, for example, have some sort of a um, image in the background, like the chat background image, we can upload an image and it could do that. Uh, we can do things like um, if you want to show the web chat, a web search in the chat, if whether or not we want it, yes, no, always, all of those things are things that we can customize. But what if you actually want to take this to the next level? Say that you really wanted to customize this for your enterprise application or something. Well, here's a version of Open Web UI that I've customized. Now, as you can see here, the things that are going to be a little bit different is the font. So I've changed the font and I've changed some of the background setting. I've changed this image now to a robot and I can do so much more, right? This is just the start. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of how you can get this done. The way that I did this is using the Open Web UI developer guide, which means that I basically took the entire repository for Open Web UI, took it into my local VS Code interface, and then through that interface, I could chat with Klein and then ask it to do things. So I don't actually know about anything related to front end development or front end coding. All I was doing is something that's known as vibe coding, which basically just means that you prompt the AI agent to make whatever change you wanted to do. Now, to actually get to that point, and just to show you what it looks like here on my interface. So basically um, over here, I asked it to, I said that there are some icons that are missing. Um, it's also missing some text. Can you change it? So it's a picture of a robot. And then it goes through, looks at all of the different files, looks at all of the different things that's available here. And then based on that, it makes the changes. And once it's done, it says that, look, I fixed all of the missing icons and this is what it currently looks like. So it makes all of the changes for us. So let me show you how you can set this up step-by-step. Step. Now we'll start by first going over to the developer guide, right? So. This is where it says like, these are all of the things that you need. Now, in terms of the system requirements, if you are on a Linux or a Mac, this is perfect, right? This is your ideal environment. But if you're on a Windows, there is one more step that you'll have to take is to download WSL. So open up PowerShell. And then here you'll simply paste this command, WSL install. And then once you do that, it's going to start installation. So it's pretty easy to actually set it up. It's not a big deal at all. So over here, uh, other things that we need. So Python, so version Python uh, 3.11 plus. We also would need Node.js. So again, we can install Node.js. Go to Google, type how to install Node.js. It's pretty simple. The last thing that uh, you also might need is some sort of a um, virtual environment um, setup. So you can use Conda. Uh, skip the registration, and then depending on if you were a Windows or a Mac or a Linux user, you would just download whatever that appropriate version is. Now, what are the steps that you'll have to take? Well, first, you'll have to clone the repository. So just open up a empty sort of folder somewhere on your computer, and then copy this command, right? Git clone and open web UI. So let's do that first. So I'm on an empty repository here. I'm going to open this up in terminal. And then I'm going to paste the command for git clone open web UI. There we go. So let's enter. And we can see that now it's installing or it's actually uploading all of these things here um, to this repository. So that's perfect. Now, what's the next step? It says that we need to go into this folder. So that's one way in which we can do this is just by actually going into these folders uh, and then just kind of working off of them. The other way is you can also open it up on VS Code. I always like to work with everything on VS Code, but if you prefer just to work with everything locally, that's fine as well, uh, if you're just setting it up for the first time. Now, the file that you need to be searching for is the .env.example file, which is available right here. Now, all you will do is just go here, or actually you can just rename this file and just remove the example. Just call it .env, that's it. So that's the next step is to create this in end file. And because we are using local llama, that should be okay. Next, we have to install the dependencies. So we have to copy this command npm install. And when we are pasting this command, we what we want to do is just to make sure that we are in that repository. 
because right now, if I look, I'm not in open web UI. So I need to CD to open web UI. And now that I'm in this repository, this is where I would run NPM install. So after you get done running NPM install, you, the last thing that you'll run is NPM run dev, and that's going to open up this front end on your computer. So that's the first part, right? That's the front end setup. The next thing is the backend. So to actually create the backend environment, all you will do is copy this command to go into the backend repository. And usually for this, you might just want to open up a new window, something like command prompt or PowerShell or whatever it is that you were using. Um, or you could just go back to the folder and then here open it in terminal. Now the folder that we need to go to is called backend. So I'm going to CD to back end. And there we go. Now over here, what are some things that I need to do? So create the Conda environment. So copy this. It's very important that you use Python 3.11, especially if you're on uh, Windows because you have some conflicts with uh, some of that C++ redistributable files and it gets pretty messy. So just make sure that you're using the Python 3.11 version. So copy this command and then paste that here and then enter it. And that's going to create a new Conda environment for you. And then just make sure that you're also activating that environment. Don't make the same mistake I did. I was I forgot to activate it, and then that was a mess to clean up. Next, we want to just run uh, the pip install requirements.txt. And then once you get done running that, you can start the backend server. So sh dev.sh. Now, depending on what sort of operating system that you're using, this is not going to work on something like PowerShell, right? So Either you can run it through something like Git Bash, or you can run this through something like WSL. I'm currently running this through Git Bash and it's working fine. Don't really have any issues. So if I was to show you what that looks like, here it is. So I ran this on Git Bash and all I did was the run sh actually did not work for me. But the command that did work is uvcarn open web UI main app. And then I specified the port and then host 0000. So I'm going to copy this command. If you're using a Mac then this is, or a Linux, then you don't have to worry about any of this. If you're using Windows, then what I would say is just copy and paste uh, this command that I have here. And I'm also going to share a uh, link to this in the description. So you can copy it from the description. Okay, so I currently have Open Web UI running on my local host 5173. That's the front end interface. It's missing an image here, but that's not a big deal. That's fine for now. Um, I went over to Klein and I asked it to change the typography, make the overall site look a lot more modern and sleek. Just a very simple prompt. So let's see if it's actually done here. Um, I got an API request error. Um, so far, it's costed me about 30 cents to run because it's the new um, Anthropic Cloud 3.7 model. But we can see that it's currently making all the changes. It's pretty fast to run all of this code that, wow, that hurt my eyes for a second. But looks like it does, it did do something. I'm pretty excited to see what this is going to look like. Okay, so there we go. The font is definitely a lot different. Um, the Image here is still going to be a little bit of an issue, but overall, not a bad improvement. Um, let's see if we can ask it to do something else. So here, I'm gonna go over back to Klein, and I'm gonna say something like, can you change the theme from dark colors to light contrast colors? Now, this is going to be a little bit more of a significant change, but let's see what this is going to look like eventually. All right, so now it looks like it is done. So let's hit Control C to exit out and then rerun npm run dev. And there we go. It's completely in light theme mode. Not sure why someone would want that, but let me write a quick test to see if everything is working. And supposed to oh there we go okay great uh something else that i also want to fix now is these icons here so what i'm going to do is again just take some screenshots just like this and then go back here paste it and then say there are some icons that are missing 
And I just said it is missing on the complete top left. And can you change that to make it look like a picture of a robot? So basically, I wanted to change this and this to look like some sort of a robot. So let's see if Clang can figure how to figure out how to do that. So it did go through a couple of different um, iterations, cost me a dollar and sixty cents. But here we go. This is what it now looks like. So not a bad job overall, I will say. But this is basically it, right? Like, uh, if you have any cool ideas, this is the place that you can try it. I'm not a coder by any means. I don't know anything about front end development. All I'm doing is vibe coding, which basically means I'm just typing what I want Claude to do. Uh, obviously, if I did know about anything related to, um, I guess this is HTML, so that should be fine. But any of this other stuff, like the CSS looks okay. But any of these other things, if I did know how to actually work uh, with it, I would be able to come up with the solution a lot quicker. But I don't need to anymore because Klein is there to really help me out. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you wanted me to do a much more detailed use case where I actually program a completely different looking interface or anything like that, or if you have any other ideas, then please feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below. I really appreciate all of the support that you've been showing me over the last couple of uh, weeks of me posting. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.